Cotton with the Cotton Group at Simply Vegas, and I am here with your November 2019 monthly market report. And let's just jump right into the news, you guys. Um, so, first thing we want to talk about is supply, and I presented this in a, in a very interesting way. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of look at our supply, not from total number of units uh, on the market, but rather in terms of our year over year change, okay? And we're looking at it from a standpoint of months of supply on the market, right? How much supply do we have in terms of months? Because that also kind of takes into to, to account buyer demand. And it's one of the things that we need to look at. And what we're gonna, I'm gonna show you really interesting trend here. So what we've seen from last year is that our inventory started to climb, right? And now it's actually, started to decrease a little bit into the fact that we're actually beginning to lose overall supply. So, you know, it, it, once we actually get down into the more recent months here, and this is nationally, you guys, um, <clears throat> what we have when it comes to that supply is, is a trend in the opposite direction. And I think it's important to point that out because the general sentiment amongst the public out there is that supply is increasing. And that was the truth a year ago, but that's not necessarily the truth right now, okay? Um, and that's from a national standpoint, and now what I did is I actually took those national numbers, right, which are here in the orange, which we just showed you on the last slide, and this is the same data for our local market. So you can see how our local market in terms of supply is jumping, um, and then we're actually even starting to see that neg th those negative numbers come into, into effect. So what we're seeing is that there's less stuff out there to buy. Is it at the place where it was two years ago, that summer, I think, of 17, when we had like uh, 0.7 months worth of supply? No, we're not at that point. But I'm saying that when, we're, when, 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 when you're out there looking at properties and you're saying, you know what, man, um, <clears throat> there's tons of supply out there, that's not necessarily the case, okay? And we need to be aware of that. Moreover, if you're someone who is thinking about upgrading, or possibly downsizing, or you want to move across town, it might be worth looking at because <clears throat> while the sentiment may be from a seller standpoint that there's a huge amount of inventory and a huge amount of, uh, of competition out there, that's not necessarily the case. And you might be able to capitalize and really kind of find yourself in a, in a, in a unique position here during these summer months or during these winter months here over the holiday season. And I bring this out, this is from NerdWallet, okay? And this was a survey that they did, right? Now 45, and this just goes towards public sentiment. Um, nearly half of all home buyers, 45%, say there are more homes for sale uh, to choose from in their communities now than there were a year ago. Okay, that's true two years ago, but it's not true for one year ago. We just looked at the facts, right? We looked at the statistics. Now, we're also 58%, so nearly three-fifths of all those people who are planning on selling within the next 18 months also believe that this is true. But it's not necessarily the case. So I'm here letting you kind of know what the trends are and, and what we're seeing and letting you know that there's actually, you know, a, a little bit more room for you to operate than you might necessarily believe if you think it's time to upgrade or downsize or move across town or whatever real estate goal it is that you may have. So it's, it, I think it's really critical that we kind of take a look at that, okay? Now, a lot of folks will say, well, you know, Cass, it's the holiday season. You know, uh, I was thinking of waiting until the spring, the buyer season, and the supply of listings substantially increases entering the new year. And this includes new construction, you guys. It also includes new construction, because understand, you're, co you're competing against those guys as well, too. The builders know exactly what the prices are in the various areas, and they're setting themselves up to compete against resales in those areas in the hopes that they can outperform. Um, so that would actually lower demand for your home in terms of waiting. So what, and you may have found a sweet spot, and I have a great slide I'm going to show you here in just a minute, but you know, year over year, when do most listings come on the market? That's the question. The answer is the second quarter, every year, right? Each year. Um, and that's what we see. These are, these are kind of the hot months when most of the listings come on, onto the market. So if we're talking about listing December, January, whatever, you might find yourself in a position where you can actually get a little bit better um, from a selling standpoint 
in, in terms of that competition. Okay, and this is the slide that I was kind of uh, alluding to. So what we have is here uh, inventory levels, right, in terms of months of supply in single family residences. And I circled this here because this is our sweet spot. So the higher that this is, that means the more listings that are out there, the more houses that, that there are to choose from. So if you're selling your house, this is the more competition you have. For, so from a seller standpoint, your sweet spot is in those lower times. And that's during these months here, November, December, January, February. So if this is a thing that you're thinking about doing, if relocating is something that's important to you, uh, if changing your, 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 your home situation is important to you, you might want to take advantage of this before it actually jumps back up. And it's, it's really important that we kind of address this and, and we start to talk about the trend that we're seeing so that people who are actually trying to capitalize on specific real estate goals are positioned well enough to do that, right? Um, now, new building permits, guys, are also up 7.7% from last year nationwide, okay? So um, that's just more competition for you in the marketplace. Now, let's see, you know, I like to go to a lot of the, the, the economists and I kind of look for various information all over the place. Any of you guys who follow this report, there's like 10 of you, love you, appreciate you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Lauren Chian, uh, and he's the chief econ economist at the National Association of Realtors. He says, must, we must continue to beat the, the drum for more inventory, right? Home prices are rising too rapidly because of the housing shortage. And this lack of inventory is preventing home sales growth potential, okay? Now, uh, he's just kind of parakeeting what, 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 what I've already shown you in these slides in that, you know, the sentiment amongst the public is that, Inventory is increasing and it's, and it's becoming more, but what we've actually seen from the numbers here in recent months is, 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 is a downturn in that. Um, <clears throat> now, and this is the new home inventory in terms of months of supply. When we look at last year versus this year, right? So obviously the 2018, right? We had that and then we started to see those numbers increase there toward the end of the year in terms of months of supply. Right, and then 2019, these are the darker bars. These, it's, it's been fluctuating a little bit, and now we're actually starting to see things dip. So interestingly enough, while the sentiment is that there's more houses out there, the numbers say that there's not, right? And that is an opportunity for you if you're looking to sell, right? So um, <clears throat> something we need to keep in mind. Now, uh, showing time, right? They have an app with many realtors across the country, including ourselves at GOVAR, right? Um, and they monitor showing activity. <clears throat> Home showing activity uh, was up again nationwide uh, with a 4.6% rise in traffic as traditionally slow fall season began with a marketed boost in buyer interest according to the latest showing time showing index report. And the Western region, which until August had experienced 18%, uh, uh, 18 consecutive months of flagging home buying traffic led the four regions um, in a year-over-year -year improvement with an 8.9% increase in buyer activity. Ladies and gentlemen, there are buyers coming to the market. There are buyers in the market. And it's interesting, if you look at my In the Car with Cash video, I think I did, I don't know, a month, month and a half ago, I was really talking about interest rates. And what we're starting to see is based upon economic policy, we've started to see decline in interest rates, which then goes to what? Home affordability, right? Guys, it's not all about price when we're talking about affordability. There is price, there is interest rates, and there are wages. And those three things determine overall affordability for homes. So there are buyers in the market. There are buyers out there. And the question is, are you going to capitalize on that? If your goal is to change where you're living now and go to somewhere else, let's kind of talk about if that makes sense and if it fits. Uh, the South Fall with a 6.4% increase, the largest such improvement in the region since April 2018. The Northwest, 5.6% increase. And the next largest re, uh, is the next largest amongst the four regions in the Midwest's uh, more modest 0.8% year over year growth. So that's from showing time. Now, uh, George Retiu, right, uh, who's the senior economist of Realtor.com, he says that buyers who are looking for their next home have faced the headwinds of a tight inventory. Uh, and competitive market this year. While lower mortgage rates and the arrival of fall have promised a reprieve, conditions actually continue to tighten as demand remains strong. 
Um, you know, uh, again, buyers are out there, and I think it has a lot to do with affordability, with interest rates coming down, with economic policy, and the way that that's actually affected the housing market. Right? We expect positive momentum because remember, last at the, at the end of last year, we didn't have a positive momentum. We actually had a negative momentum that dropped off after the summer, especially here locally, after all that hardest hit fund money uh, uh, cleared up. Um, that started to, to, to dwindle a little bit. So we didn't actually have a lot of positive momentum at the end of 2018 and coming into 2019. But, um, so we've expected, but now he's saying something different now. He's saying we expect that the positive momentum um, in, in sales to carry over into the fourth quarter and into early next year. So we're going to be going and we're going to finish out this year on a stronger note and start 2020 on a stronger note. And we forecasted total home sales, including both new and existing homes, will be at 5.98 million in 2019 and then expected to increase to 6.03 million in 2020. And that's what Freddie Mac is 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 kind of forecasting in terms of overall sales volume going into next year so it's a very different scenario than it was last year and total sales for the nine months of 2019 uh for the first nine months of 2019 and this is from the national association of home builders 527,000 were 7.2 percent higher than uh than that comparable total for 2018 in 2018 was a very strong year, and we expect sales volume to continue to trend up slightly in the coming months uh, as more new homes are built. And guys, understand, if you're a seller, right, this means a, a additional competition for you, right? Um, so, having said that, housing appears to have renewed its place as a bright spot, contributing toward uh, the U.S. economic growth. The, the return of accelerating quarterly price growth, rising sales numbers, and increasing home builder confidence in activity all point to closing out 2019 on a healthy note, despite greater volatility over the course of the year. And this is from Skylar or uh, Olson. He's the director of economic research over at Zillow. Uh, and I just want to say that, that, that you know what, um, you may have heard a lot of real estate professionals in the news and that sort of thing talking about the slowdown and it, because we had a huge uptick uh, over the last number of years that slowed down and leveled out uh, over last year. And But now we've actually started to see with an inventory drop that that could uptick again. Now, are we talking about huge gains? No, I'm still saying that the numbers and the predictions are the same as what they've been over the last few months, which is that people are really kind of looking at a three to 4% increase year over year in the housing market but what i'm saying is sellers you need to capitalize right if that's what uh if, if that's where your goals are at and it's a thing that you've been contemplating maybe waiting for the spring isn't the best thing for you maybe it's worth talking uh, about now and this one says depending upon uh depending upon the price you're going to need advice and every market is different let me actually go this way yeah i don't know why i keep forcing myself the other way i'm weird but anyway um and guys <sighs> That means that basically, the, right now what we're seeing is a very stratified market, okay? And that means that we see different market conditions based upon either A, location, or B, price. And price is really one of the, the, the chief areas that we're seeing that. So entry-level inventory saw the largest declines with the number of homes priced under 200000 dropping by 15 15.2% year over year. Meanwhile, mid-tier inventory price homes, mid-priced, right, between 200000 and 750000 dropped by 4.3% year over year. And the inventory of the nation's most expensive homes saw a slight increase in overall inventory um, of homes selling for uh, uh, more than seven, and an increase by 1.3% year over year. So based upon what your price point is, you want to get with an experienced a knowledgeable agent who can actually tell you exactly what you need to do and exactly where you need to be. Not wishful thinking, guys. I know, I know you'd like to sell your house for 20% more than it's worth and you'd like to buy a thing for 20% less than it's worth in, in a flat market. That's not very realistic, you guys. Um, you know, so, so having said that, you really need to get advice from a good professional who knows the marketplace, who can really tell you the specifics of where you need to place your home, exactly how you need to market your home, and how you need to package it in order to get it sold. All right? Now, because like I was saying, there are buyers out there, and, 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 and here's the deal. So these are interest rates, um, mortgage rates, okay? 
uh, from Freddie Mac on a 30 year fixed rate. And, what, and from January 18th, so what we've seen is an increase, okay? And now they're actually decreasing. And, and, and where are they going, right? People are, uh, are there anticipating that, that rates are going to stay in the threes, okay? So I think we were up here, uh, even in the, in the high fours, you know, at kind of a peak there. Um, and this is uh, right around uh, uh, November of, of last year. But that's not where we're going, right? Where we're going is and expected them to stay low, stay in the threes, which means that home affordability might be uh, 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 in a really, really good place, right? And when we're talking about affordability, and it's great. And I'm gonna, I, I was, I was having a debate with one of the um, faculty members um, at uh, the UNLV uh, Lead Institute of Real Estate Studies yesterday, and he was talking about price. And I said, I think it's a very one-dimensional thing that you're that you're looking at when you're looking at it from a price standpoint. You can buy and sell houses like stocks if you want. They're not nearly as liquid as stocks, but that's not what you need to look at, for my opinion, because we're talking about places that people live, right? We want to look at overall affordability. And I, guys, I'm talking about affordability, housing affordability, and this is the index from 1990 until today. So we're right here where this green line is. Now, this was the sweet spot. So the higher these bars are, that means the more affordable it is. And, and this was when distressed properties dominated the market, this was during the crash, right? When, when prices were cut in half or worse, right? And interest rates due to economic policy to try to help the economy push up and rebound, they were, they were at a, a, a really, really low place, right? So these, these times dominated the market. But overall, right, when we look at where we're at today from an affordability standpoint versus our overall past, houses are much more affordable today than they have been. So... You know, home buying also makes sense. Uh, and the median, the, the, the median asking price of rent since 1988 has continued to climb and is expected to continue to climb. Um, you know, as housing prices have, have climbed, you know, obviously you have investors who are trying to maximize uh, their return on investment. So obviously they want to push and push and push and see what the market is going to bear, right? So the question is, if you are a renter or in, 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 in a potential first time home buyer, do you want to continue to ride the cycle up of increasing rents or do we want to take care of the affordability that we just touched based on on the last slide to really begin to lock yourself in and save yourself money, right? Well, Cass, is now really a good time to buy? Are prices going to go up or down? Again, I've shared this slide a number of times before. I'm going to share it again. We have the Home Price Specialty Survey, Morgan's Bankers Association, Zellman Associates, Freddie Mac, National Associates, uh, Associated Realtors, and Fannie Mae. And these are, their, uh, these are their estimates, okay, over the next four years, many of them over the next two years, of what price are going to happen. And guys, this is normal appreciation. This is normal market appreciation in real estate, okay? But what I really want to drive home is there's no depreciation. There's no one saying, hey, man, we really anticipate the real estate market to depreciate. And, you know, I'm not going to go on a long tirade about this. Look at the last few months if you want to go on that tirade, okay? Uh, the forecasted year-over-year -year change in price, um, you know, over, uh, you know, and this is from CoreLogic. So uh, across the country, this is what we're seeing in terms of the forecasted year-over-year change in price. And for ourselves, we actually look good uh, uh, going here into the future in, 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 in Nevada. Again, uh, let's talk about home price changes, depreciation in the face of a recession. It's, I was uh, talking to a very good friend of mine last week. We were talking about economics. We were talking about recession. And he was talking about home prices. And I had to remind him uh, that, again, out of the last five recessions, only twice have home prices depreciated. This was during the large crash, but we've seen appreciation on those three recessions. And in this recession, we only saw a depreciation of 1.9%. So once again, you guys, recession is just a slowdown in GDP for two successive quarters. Inverted yield curve does not mean that your house price is gonna crash. Again, I think it's a little bit of PTSD from the last situation. And I totally get it, man. It's emotional. It was emotional to lose our houses. It's emotional to have all that upheaval. And I get it. I was there too, man. Um, but we need to look at the facts and we can't let illogical, emotional drivers drive our decision-making process. So the top three triggers for the next recession. Let's talk about it again. 
trade policy, stock market correction, and geopolitical crisis. Number nine, number nine possible cause, right, is a housing slowdown. That's number nine. Guys, we're not even in the top three, right? Last time, this was the reason, right? This was the reason that the, that the crash happened. And let's, let's look here, right? June of 2004, June of two, or 2005, June of 2006. And this is how easy it was, right, to get a mortgage, the mortgage availability index. So uh, once again, it was super easy. You didn't, bro, do you have a heartbeat? You got a mortgage. That's what it was like back then, right? That's not what it's like now. Based upon uh, the way that lending trends have gone, right, you now need to prove a lot of things. You now need to be able to go through an underwriting process. You now need to have more than a pulse to get a mortgage. And you know what? It's been that way. And as a result, you know, uh, in terms of mortgage availability, they're not offering mortgages to everybody. You used to have to have decent credit. You have to have some sort of proof that you can earn a living, right? Uh, there needs to be evidence behind that, guys. So from that standpoint, that's not the, the cause. So uh, that's kind of that. Now, one other thing I want to slide into, which is really super exciting, is that, um, and I mentioned this before, and, and, and yesterday I, I attended um, a really great presentation. Uh, again, uh, UNLV, the lead school, uh, the lead institute of real estate at their business school, um, is doing a sentiment survey, and they're going to be releasing new and new stuff quarterly. Uh, I'm really jazzed because I got to jump on this. Uh, you're probably getting the information from me here first, which is super rad. I just think that's awesome. So we dance. Okay, enough of that. I should throw a dance segment in the uh, December video. I'm thinking about it. Anyway, um, overall housing sentiment. And now this, guys, these were actually real estate brokers that... The university sent a survey to, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I just wanted to present a few kind of key things that I thought were interesting. And I had a great conversation about yesterday. Um, <laughs> the overall housing, so overall assessment of the real estate market in the summer. And, I, and for this slide, I literally just did Clark County. Um, uh, uh, so this is over the next quarter. So 14% say, hey, they anticipate it getting better. 69% of the respondents said that they expect it to stay the same, and then 17% expect it to get worse. Now, these are, 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 are local real estate brokers in Clark County. Now, overall assessment of the real estate market over the next year. So now the, the getting better number increases uh, from 14% to 39%, while staying the same uh, decreases uh, to 42%. And, and only 19%, a very small percentage, think that it's going to get worse. Based upon the fundamentals, I mean, obviously, I'm in this getting better, but not an excessive. I don't believe in, in huge jumps. I think that we're going to stick, like I said, right around that 3 to 4% appreciation, which we've seen that the numbers seem to indicate and that the experts believe that we're going to have. Total sentiment score uh, over the 90 day, uh, we have a 14% sentiment score. And uh, for the year annually, we have a 28% um, uh, score. So basically, I think what they did is that anyone that responded positively gave them a plus one. Anyone that responded negatively gave them a negative one. And anyone that responded um, uh, with staying the same got a zero score. And then they're doing this. But it, it's going to be interesting to see how the data points line up and what they begin to do over time with this new um, uh, uh, survey that they're doing. And I think it's really, really interesting stuff. I actually included a few of the other counties, Clark, Washoe, Douglas, and Elko. Uh, Nye County, I don't think, had enough respondents for them to have data points to actually put that out. So, you know, uh, there you go. So, question. Now is a good time to buy, right? And in Clark County, so we had... So we had right around 78%. Yeah, it's now's a good time. Uh, now's a good time to buy. Around 19% uh, said uh, neutral, and uh, a very small percentage disagreed with that statement. Okay, and then it was posed, now's a good time to sell. Right, Clark County again, right around that same number, 79% said, yeah, we think it's a good time to sell. Very similar number. Uh, we're very neutral, and a little higher percentage. Uh, thought that um, thought that it was uh, uh, disagreed with that. Now, one could say, how is it a good time to buy and sell at the same time? Well, and 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 we got and and in the conversation yesterday, we kind of got down to it. And my entire point of view was this: when we're talking about people and their realistic real estate goals, I think it's a great time to sell now. Why? Because prices just appreciated. We don't expect a huge boom and surge in pricing. So you're kind of, 
re really kind of dancing around what's going to be leveled out, small appreciation, top end of the market. So it's not like you're necessarily losing out on a huge boost, right? Should you choose, uh, should you choose to sell your house right now? Okay. Yet, and still at the same time, it's also a good time to buy because uh, like I said, we're not expecting depreciation and overall home affordability is low due to recent economic policy based upon interest rates and uh, uh, the correlation of mortgage rates. So having said that, I think if, if you're talking about just trying to buy and sell houses to make money and it's not necessarily a place that you're going to live uh, is, is, is now uh, a, a great time, hard to say, right? But if you're talking about from a standpoint of, of meeting your family's goals of either A, stepping up where you live, B, downgrading a little bit because you just have too much house for it and it's just you living there, or let's say, you know what, uh, you live in the Northwest and you find yourself working in Green Valley now. Well, maybe it's, uh, and, and you've had some, some goals to try to move across town. Well, in those instances, I think that both of those are actually equally true because that's actually what, what we, I think, as real estate professionals encounter every day. So having said that, man, I really thought that those were really kind of interesting numbers. Again, um, these are resources, more resources. And if you have any questions about where I get my stuff, by all means, just hit me up, man. I can send you this resource list and then we can argue about whatever you want because I'm willing to back up my numbers all day, every day. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next month.